Hey folks, uh, welcome back. This is Joel, and uh, we will continue with our discussion on history access. Right, so <clears throat> going back to the mind map on the stuff which we have done till now, um, I believe you know we, we we did all of this on the left hand side, right? We talked about the license benefits, the components, and so on. Uh, then we started looking into obviously the DNAT, and uh, we talked a little bit on the installation part. We talked a little bit on the settings, right? Uh, the initial settings like certificates and you know, and all of that, um, the, I mean, adding your eyes and all of that, right, we talked about that. Then we also looked into the various tools, right, which comes, um, you know, standalone tools which come as part of DNAC, you can use that uh, with SPA or maybe even without SPA, right, you can, those are all standalone tools. Then what did we do next? Um, uh, then we talked about design, right, so uh, the first app which we talked about was the design app and in the design app, we talked about how you can add some of this, you know, DHCP route, DHCP servers, syslogs, uh, you know, AAA servers, NTP. We talked about how you write, put in the credentials so that DNAC will be able to reach the devices. We defined the various address pools we'll be using, right? And then we assigned, uh, you know, some of this, uh, uh, this, this, this one, right? So we, we did all of that, right? So, and then we also added, uh, you know, sites and various buildings and floors. We also even uploaded a floor map as well, right? So that later maybe in the wireless section and all of that we could leverage. Next, uh, what we did was we looked into provision. So in provision, we kind of uh, provision a very simple configuration template. You can do more complicated stuff as well, but we did a very simple configuration template where we put the banner, if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, MOTD banner, yeah. Then we kind of skipped these three sections and went down to the policy, which we did in the previous video, right? Uh, in the previous video, we integrated with eyes we, we uh, checked out how you can write, you know, policies using, you know, such creating SGT, then you create some kind of, um, you know, either you can have manual SGT mappings on, you know, uh, IP to SGT mapping, you can do that on DNAC or you can, uh, uh, you can, you can basically have ICE, you know, dynamically assign SGTs, you know, on authentication, then you are whole creating the contract and creating the policy, creating access contracts, creating the policies, all of that we saw, that's part of process. Right, so uh, <clears throat> so that was uh, mainly our uh, um, uh, you know discussion on your whole uh, policy section. Right, so now the next interesting piece is our um, you know we'll have to uh, actually do the most important part, which is the fabric provision over here. Right, again uh, this is just a mind map which I have prepared for my you know. Uh, easier use but uh, you know maybe you can just uh, use the stuff which makes sense to you uh, maybe edit it and make it finer you know go ahead feel free to do it right all right so now we'll have to like I said we'll have to do the provision which means we'll have to do the actual fabric which is the so we have done the underlay right uh, we have done the underlay before where you know we did it using the uh, PNP LAN automation right so this part is done we have to literally do the overlay and we have to define the virtual network right so all these various steps which you see here will probably be end up doing right we might not do the whole inter v intra vn inter vn and you know communicating to the external connections let me see how much we can achieve with the lab but um, the whole idea is to provision your fabric which means do the whole vx plan do the list and then uh, figure out how you can have communication between the endpoints right so that being said let's go back to probably the topology this is where we are right so we will start like i said by provisioning the fabric. So the first step what you got to do is let's go uh, to my DNAC, right? This is basically the page I was just playing around with whatever we did in the previous video. Uh, maybe some of the policies are changed since the previous video. I probably was testing some stuff. So it doesn't matter for our, you know, example, uh, you know, um, it, it just needs to map, uh, match whatever we have defined here, right? These are basically your group based policies. Cool, so coming to your fabric, so what do you do first? Go to provision, okay? So under provision, you will probably find a fabric. So I might have already created a fabric here, right? So um, maybe give me a second, let me delete that and we could uh, do this all again. All right, all right, so I deleted the fabric so that you know we can create it again, right? So there you go, so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna give the name as say university because that's my whole use case, right? Uh, select the site where you want this fabric, so it's going to be the RCVM spec. <coughs> all the VMs which you need for this fabric, right? So I'm going to obviously select all of them, 
um, you know, I would basically want all the all the VMs in this particular fabric. So I'm going to add all of those guys, right? So while we are here, let me also create a transit network. So this will be needed while uh, we kind of try to talk outside the fabric, right? I'll tell you where this will be useful, but probably for now, I'm just going to say IP transit, right? Should be fine. It's just a transit network because what happens is when we uh, look at my topology over here. Um, actually, it's better I'll explain you when when I get to that configuration. Otherwise, you'll be all clueless now. Okay, so let me just for now pass this thing. I'm gonna create a create a IP based you know transit network over here. Um, the protocol is gonna be BGP and uh, the AS path is uh, I'm sorry the AS autonomous number is gonna be 65 say 65,000, right? I'll tell you where that actually comes into play. Okay, so now let's get into the fabric. So you see this has been already provisioned to us. All our devices will appear over here, which is cool. Now we have to start uh, giving names to our devices. Like for example, this is our edge device. So let's go and make this an edge. So let's add it. Right, so did I do it right? Let me check. Yeah, so this is the edge device. Cool, done. This this also is an edge device, so let's go and select that, right? Then what? So the uh, the next node which we want to provision is our. So if you look from our uh, topology, we want to do the border one. So these are not just border; they are also the control nodes, right? Control and border. Ideally, in a very small topology, you don't even want border, right? If you want to talk within your fabric, you would not even want border. It's not compulsory. The only mandatory ones are you need to have control and you need to have edge, right? Border is not even compulsory, but since we are doing a lab and we are exploring, let's enable borders. Let's see what happens. So, um, so we want to enable borders here. So first, let's enable controls. We are making it control, and then we are going to enable border as well. So when you enable border, this is going to ask you some more information, right? So this is where that whole you know BGP and whatever I did earlier comes into play, right? So how this works is maybe let me take the moment now to explain how this works, and then we can continue with the rest of the this thing so this is how it works so you have uh, use the different time yeah so let's say this is my border router right let's say this is b1 this is my b2 right i have my uh, edges here right so this is my h1 right and this is my h2 right and all my uh, amazing clients are basically connected down here so that's cool right now here you know that here in between these guys we have isis in the underlay Right, ISS in the underlay for all the IP forward forwarding, right? So which is which is cool. So they, here you have ISS. Now uh, what happens is that you you would have created your um, you know VLANs over here, right? Um, you will be basically creating your various VLANs, right? Uh, on the on the edges. So you will probably have a VLAN for uh, you know your campus traffic, right? Your guest traffic, right? Even inside campus you might have different types of traffic. Right, so we have, we'll basically have, uh, we'll basically have, uh, uh, you know, we might have even multiple different v uh, VLANs for different types of campus traffic and so on. Right, and in fact, in, in our case itself, I think we have uh, one for probably for data traffic. Uh, maybe we can just look at the address pool which we have. I've forgotten what I have over here. Let's see. So if you go down to uh, design, and if you see the Network pools, right? I bear those pools. Let's scroll down. Let's see inside our site what do we have. So not here. Yes. Yeah. So here we have, um, you know, we have the guest traffic, right? Uh, we have, um, you know, the production traffic. We have the infra traffic, um, and then uh, so yeah, I believe this infra traffic and the production traffic are all both of them are actually part of the campus VM, right? So like that, you are going to have different kinds of traffic in your enterprise, right? Different traffic, different kinds of traffic, and they're going to be different VLANs to cater to that. Right? That's going to be here. Now uh, um, the other thing is, um, uh, so this is your, uh, you know, kind of like a layer two segmentation, right? Uh, the VLANs are basically layer two. So the layer three segmentations are VMs, right? So we have two VMs in our case. I mean, we also have like the default VM and the infra VM, but the infra VM is nothing but the routing table itself. Right, the the default routing table, right, the global routing table, 
Um, so the only VRFs which we are going to have is the campus VRF, the guest VRF, and uh, I believe the default VN, which is which we are not using. So mainly these both VRFs, which are the which are like your L3 um, kind of like segregators or L3 isolators, right? So all the traffic inside the campus VRF will remain inside campus VRF, right? So now you need to somehow maintain that isolation, right? So what we do is on the border, right? Because you see what we have here is we we have the rest of the shared services, right? We have like your DHCP and all of that. So think of this as your shared services. So you have your shared services at the top. You have your DHCP, you have your WLC, ICE, and all of these are shared services across the enterprise, right? In fact, you can even share this across sites as well, not just, you know, across one site. Tomorrow, if you have multiple sites of SDA, you can even share this across sites, right? But for now, to keep it simpler, you have this one site and you have the shared services and you would want the shared services to be shared across various VMs, right? Not just campus, but also guest and all of the guys. So the simplest or the easiest way is to kind of have a BGP over here. So in our case, we are going to call these two routers which are here, right? The campus core one, core one and core two, we are going to call this as the fusion routers, right? These are not provisioned by the, uh, you know, DNAC, right? So which, what I mean by that is, DNAC will not configure this, we will have to manually configure them because DNAC configures only the edge and the border. It doesn't do anything with the fusion. So we will have to manually configure them. But what do you mean by configure, right? So what we will have to do is we will have to put in some kind of a BGP over here between your border and your, um, you know, uh, border and your core. In fact, we have for redundancy, we have multiple connections here. So we will have to put BGP over here between these guys. Why we need to do that? Because at the end of the day, on, on your BGP over here, we are going to have uh, multiple routing tables, Why? Right? We are going to have multiple routing tables corresponding to this different VRFs, right? You are going to have one for campus, you are going to have one for guest, right? And maybe you might have another 10 more depending upon your VMs. In our case, we have just two. And then obviously, you have your global routing table, right? You are going to have your global routing table that is always there, right? On the router, it will always be existing. So, uh, that's why so now you have this various VRFs right so you need to somehow share those routes right with your fusion right or basically you need to have some kind of a BGP relationship over here so that these external routes which are there behind this fusion right they can be shared down right in fact one of the most important thing in our use case would be the DHCP right the DHCP is here at 172 16 99.13 right now when a client comes up here the first time Right, they they will reach out to the DHCP server for getting an IP. But if the DHCP server is not reachable, right, how will it get an IP, right? So DHCP server has to be reached. So which means that particular service has to be allowed inside. So we need to have some kind of a BGP over here, right? Your normal BGP, right? VRF based BGP will be, um, you know, uh, is going to be configured here between your B1 and C1. In fact, same thing around B2 and C2. Um, and again, uh, uh, the configuration on your Fusion routers, we will have to do it on the border. You know, our uh, DNAC is going to push it, and I'll obviously show you how to do it as well. But um, that's basically uh, how you will basically be uh, leaking this, or let's let's say uh, you know, getting access to this external routes, right? Now uh, there will be another use case where you know, I think you would have seen in my in, uh, in my uh, mind map here. I have three use cases. One is your, um, you know, getting access to your, ex um, you know, basically intra v uh, VN, inter VN, and um, your external connection. So what I mean by that is, basically, um, this is one of the use cases where you are getting access to some of the shared services, or say some of your enterprise, you know, services. Right? These are your enterprise services, right? Now there might be a case where um, one of the VN, right, which is here, like say campus, uh, to make it more interesting let's say this there are uh, you know one two three four there are four different services you know it could be anything maybe one is DHCP two is uh, uh, syslog or something like that right imagine there are like various services now you would want your campus uh, VRF to get access to one and two whereas you want your guests to get access to three and four right so this also can be done basically it's all about you know the BGP neighborship over here Right, you because you are on fusion over here, you can now decide what you want to advertise inside, right? So, for a particular VRF, say campus, you can advertise one and two, right? The one and two routes can be advertised using some kind of a route map or a prefix list and stuff like that. Whereas uh, for guest VRF, you can 
you know, advertise free and so. So that's how you can like control what you want to send inside the fabric and so on, right? So that's one use case. The other use cases you would you can also now uh, maybe your clients want to reach out to the internet, right? So your border, which is over here, will be the gateway to reach out to the internet, right? So you you can kind of like for a particular VRF, you can also make your border, um, you know, advertise a default route, right? Which means uh, you know, if you if you want to kind of like go out of the fabric, you can do that as well. So that's another use case. The other use cases, um, uh, something which I will park for now because this uh, you might not get the complete picture right now. So the inter VN communication I'll park for now. Uh, but I think so much is good. I think you understood the whole idea about why we want BGP over here and um, you know the whole reason of you know going for it, right? So that being said, so when you're talking about BGP here, that's what we are going to configure now. Right, so that's why I have set up this one. What is that? Yeah, yeah. So I'm on border one, and I'm basically telling this is going to be my local BGP number, right? AS number sixty-five thousand two. Um, I'm gonna uncheck this, right? So there are different types of borders. Again, you can have an internal border, external border, or you can use it as a internal and external border, right? Basically, goes back to what I was explaining here. If you want the border to be the gateway only for the internal networks, it's an internal border. Only for the external, then it's an external border, external in the same the internet. If you want it to be the gateway for both of the guys, then you can use it as internal and external, right? So that's where uh, uh, you know this comes into play. And um, by just checking one of this, you're basically telling it, uh, it to be the default gateway for everything, for internal and external. That being said, the next part is, uh, Let's uh, go and select the pool. So this is the pool which will be used for configuring that whole BGP part, right? Between your um, what? Between your border and the fusion router. So I'm going to select one of the pool which I had created earlier, right? The border one. Um, and here we'll have to select that IP transfer, right? So now you understand why we have the IP transfer which I created earlier. I just put in the BGP number as 65,000, right? Over there. So because this is the BGP configuration which will go on our fusion router. I'll show you where and how, but for now. Next, we'll have to also have the interfaces, right? In our case, what are the interfaces? Uh, from the topology, if you see, it's going to be uh, interface 101 and 102, right? So those are the interfaces on which I want the BGP to be configured. So I'll have to add them explicitly. So let's select 101, right? This is all selected. Uh, let's also select all the various um, uh, you know VNs right over here so let's save that let's add another interface 101 and 102 right so as when I select all the VNs here what it will do is in the back end the border will basically go and creating sub interfaces for all these VNs right so that's why you need to set I mean you don't have to select everything whichever VNs wants you know access to the shared services or external you know connectivity those are the ones you need to select in my case I'm probably gonna select everything right because I want the connectivity cool that's it so you added this and is there anything else to be done okay um, so L2 uh, handoff I really don't want uh, so all of that would come if you're doing like multi-site and all of that so for now this is good so let's add this Right, let's go to the other guy again make the same configuration right nothing different so here it's going to be 65002 let's remove this the pool is going to be the same this we are not able to select oops that is no not that That's weird. Give me a second. I think it's some issue with the display. Yeah, it's better now. So I'm going to select the border van and let's select the IP transit, right? I'm going to add this and under this guy, I'm going to add the interfaces. Same interfaces on the other side as well. 101, I believe it's 101. Yep, it's 101 and 102. So we're going to add 101, select all the VNs, save. And uh, let's add another one, right? We are going to do 102, select everything, and we are going to save. Cool, okay, this looks good. So we have added everything. Uh, 
there you go and let's go and add this it's pretty much good so once you have done with everything you should appear as blue over here right hope we have done everything is there anything else to be done let me just check let me just double check okay so that's pretty good let's see if i save this um, <coughs> Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So let's go and apply this. So now it will go and provision, right? Basically, or it will go and basically try to configure this uh, into our network. So we should start seeing some configuration get pushed in. There you go. You can see some uh, VRFs are getting configured. So I'm gonna probably pause this for now because I want the configurations to be completed. Then we can quickly do the rest of the stuff. All right. So looks like that got completed. You can always check the status here. You can see the task gets completed and it shows us deployed over here, which is cool. Uh, next, let's go to the host onboarding section. Right. So this is where once once the overlay is provisioned. Right, it needs some kind of IP address pools, right? To be added to enable the host to communicate with the fabric. So this is where you define all of that. So first is authentication template. We're gonna select obviously closed authentication, right? If you wanna edit the parameters, you can do that. You're gonna set that as a default. Closed authentication because you will be doing all your map and dot one x and all of that, right? So that's cool. Uh, what else? So your next is you have your VNs. Okay. So for VNs, we will have to, uh, so these are all the four VNs which are visible here. Um, what we will do is we will start providing your, um, you know, pools, right? So I think we will have to go and add here, select the pool, as in our case, uh, what are we going to do? So for campus VN, we are going to give the infra. So I see there is an infra VN as well, but we are going to send all the whole infra traffic as well as the production traffic inside the campus VN itself. Right? So um, you can you can always do it separately, right? You don't have to do it inside the same VN. Uh, generally, yeah, it's better to keep the infra traffic in the global routing table, right? So you can do it separately as well. Um, nevertheless, we will um, send that over here. So first, we will go for uh, infra, and uh, the the IP address pool automatically gets selected, right? So this is the 192.2.12.0. That's the infra one. And um, or maybe we could just keep. Uh, let me just think. Should we just keep only the uh, production in this? All right. So it's fine. I mean, we are gonna send. We can send both. That should be cool. So uh, let's do that. And uh, do we want layer two extension for this particular VN? Um, let's see. Where is that? So the scalable group tags. Uh, no, don't have to select. I mean, if you want to manually. Add something. We are gonna obviously deliver this scalable group tax from our eyes, right? Dynamically, so we don't have to manually put that. What kind of a traffic? That's interesting. So we're gonna have obviously data traffic on this, right? And um, layer two flooding. Do we do we want layer two flooding? Uh, let me see. All right, that should be good. Uh, let's go and add this. Let's add another one. This is basically my production. Right, pretty uh, the data again. This is going to be data. That's good. So let's save this. So now this would turn blue in color. The campus VN. Um, okay, it hasn't yet. Let's close this. Yeah, okay. So now it's turned in blue. Let's also go and provide in the guest one. So let's add another IP set here. This is the one which we have already. Uh, I mean, we have reserved right this particular address 192.2.21.0 for guest. Select the data traffic and there you go. Let's add this. Save and close. <coughs> um, or maybe let's uh, let's do one thing for the guest at least we can because we might want to communicate across VM. So let me um, select guest and let's edit this a bit. Let's do enable uh, layer two flooding for this one. Okay, so let's save that. All right, so when I close this, you see the guest also is highlighted in blue. 
if you had some you know like i said uh, if you want to put all your infrastructure traffic you know in a specific uh, uh you know you basically want to put that in infra v and we can do that i just put it inside campus vn itself but you could if you have like printers and all of that and all the traffic you can probably put it separately in the global routing table because all of the users you know uh, would want to access to that right so you can put it in the global routing table as well um yeah so that's pretty good so vms have like i said giving you the whole macro segmentation right so we have now campus traffic we have guest traffic so when if you're getting authenticated as a guest you're basically going to get an ip address from this particular pool and you know you're gonna be only present inside this vrs right cool so uh, that's pretty much it uh, on this one. The next is let's quickly look at the configurations what got pushed. Right, so if you want to check that out here, I don't know, maybe over here on this one. Yeah, let's check it on. Just to validate that the configurations got pushed uh, mainly with respect to Lisp and stuff. Right, so. Just check that. So if you do show run, sorry. Let's, let's just get the stuff which we need. Section less probably. So there you go. So this is the stuff, right? Uh, the router list should be there. You can see the map resolver. So this is nothing but your IP address of your uh, loopbacks of your uh, you know border one and border two, right? Because they are going to be your map servers in the list architecture. Then you should see some um, instance IDs, right? So the instance IDs, you can see uh, instance ID for every single VRF has been created. So this is probably for your, uh, you know, global routing table, 97. 98 seems to be for your default VN. Obviously, we are not using that VN. You have 99 for your campus VN. And we have uh, 4100 for your, uh, you know, guest VN, right? So you can see the instance IDs and the VRF getting mapped to that and um, uh, yeah that's pretty much it and then we will obviously uh, look at the list table once you know once we uh, once we have the whole thing working right once we have the clients coming in so that's on the list side also maybe i can show you the loop packs show run section let's see interface so the loop pack yeah so the loop pack zero loop pack one so this was already there right the loop pack zero earlier as well it was added, I believe, while uh, uh, maybe while doing the whole LAN automation, or uh, that was that was the first time it got added. But uh, the important loopbacks are loopback one, right? Uh, uh, one zero twenty two, one zero twenty three, um, and your uh, I think there's like sixty thousand or something that you created. But yeah, this is this is important. So loopback one one zero two one uh, is getting created for your you know campus uh, VN, right? And you can see. This one is also for your campus VN, 1022 and 1024 is for your guest VN, right? So these are all going to be used, uh, you know, in the whole, uh, you know, VXLAN uh, and LISP, uh, you know, uh, section because uh, remember in the VXLAN video, we talked about how loopbacks are basically nothing but the VTEPs, right? So um, that's uh, that's one of the stuff and what else? So, I mean, I would suggest you to... Um, to, to get a more understanding about LISP and VXLAN, VXLAN you can at least look at my previous video, but for LISP, I would suggest you to kind of explore LISP individually in a small network, right, and uh, um, maybe in a test uh, setup, and then you'll get a more understanding about the whole LISP configuration end-to-end -end here, right, uh, because it's again a very big topic just to, you know, talk about that, right. Uh, also, observe the various VLANs which got created, or, you know, I have the, um, here on the screen, I also have the interface VLANs, which is nothing but the SVIs. So this SVI was already there before as part of the default configuration, but you see these are the ones which got created. Starting from 3009, going up till I think, I don't know, maybe 3017 or 18, 16, right? So, so much got created. So this is because, um, this is mainly for that stuff, right? Where I was telling, we have to somehow extend this uh, from my topology here. We have to, uh, we have to kind of like, uh, you know, have a BGP here. And all the VRFs which are there over here has to be, you know, shared to the fusion router, right? So, or the route, there should be a BGP neighborhood between the VRFs over here. So, that is why uh, the VLANs are created or the SVIs are created on V1 and uh, also on obviously on V2. And I'll show you how, you know, you can leverage that configuration which got pushed by DNAC, how you can use that configuration to 
create your BGP configuration on your Fusion Router. Right, so that's going to be straightforward. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but before that, is there anything else? Yeah, I'll show you the BGP configuration as well, which is there on my right on my uh, uh, border router. Right, so you can see the BGP configuration as of now. You can see the various VRFs. Right, you can see these are the VRFs. So basically, we have to establish BGP neighborhood for all these address families. Um, you know, on the Fusion as well. Right, and uh, that is why we have those various VLANs, right? So literally what we'll be doing is we'll be taking this VRF, each of this VRF, mapping it to each of those VLANs which got created, right? 3000, 3001 and all of that. So we will uh, we'll find the mapping, what mapping is being used. So we could just check it right now. Show VRF, if I do, you can see here for campus VN, we have the VLAN 3013 and 3009, right? Uh, I believe two got created mainly because maybe I have two address, uh, two address pools, I believe, inside campus VN. Similarly, you know, uh, all the places you can see uh, 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 for default VN also we have a couple of uh, VLANs getting created. For guest VLAN, we have a couple of you know, VLANs getting created, right? So, so we will basically use uh, you know, at least one of these VLAN to kind of um, uh, you know, establish BGP neighborship. Um, you know, um, between be, within the campus uh, VN over here and the Fusion router, right? So that we can exchange the BGP routes. I'll show you how to do that. But that's the whole significance of that, uh, you know, VLANs and the VRFs. So that's how the VR, VRFs and VLANs are connected. And what else? Um, the same thing would be there on the other, uh, we can also check on the edge. What's happening on the edge? So this is edge 6 and this one is uh, H5, interesting. So, let me just check what is the um, what's the IP on this one? It's 73, and the loopback is 99.71. Okay, interesting. Cool. So anyway, let's come back here. So um, on on the edges as well, either of the edges, right? Doesn't matter if it is edge one or edge two. Either of the edges. Uh, this is my edge one. It's very weird that it got named six. I was hoping this to get five. Anyway, so um, um, uh, so on the edges, what do we have on the edges? Let's check the um, let's check the list configuration on the edges as well, because the list is going to be configured everywhere, right? Because it's on the edges as well as the you know control nodes. So you can see uh, there is going to be a list here, which is where is it? Yeah, there you go. You have the list configuration, and uh, you will basically see the same instance IDs over here as well. 97, 98, 99, right? Um, you can see all of that, and see there are two address pools for this campus VM that is mentioned there. And what else do we want? Yeah, so that's mainly your list uh, configuration over there, and. Uh, we should also verify that we should have those VLANs getting created, right? So uh, maybe you can do something like show run. Show run section VLAN. So you see the VLANs are 1021, uh, 22, uh, 24, um, right? So these are the three ones which are important for us. The rest of them are all standard VLANs. So these are the VLANs which um, you know will be assigned to your um, you know end host. Now can you relate back to why we did this? I'll I'll show you what we did this and what we did in ICE. Right? Remember, I blindly put in the uh, VLAN uh, uh, name over there, and I told you guys that I'll explain that later. So let's go and connect that back now. So this this format is going to be always the same. It's always going to be the subnet, then a dash and the VLAN name. So that's why I took the uh, liberty to go and uh, you know put that part here so in the i believe it was sorry in the results mm, under profiling right if you pick one particular profile like for example say campus production profile right under the vlan section look here i i already use 192 2.11 campus dash vn right and that's very much in line with what this is over here right so this is pretty much standard so i took the liberty to uh, you know, pre, uh, you know, add it proactively over there. You can obviously go and edit it. You know, once you get the right VLAN names from here, right? Cool. So um, that is the whole stuff, I believe. What else is that? Uh, we should obviously 
have SVIs over here for each of these VLANs because those are your any cached gateways, right? So show run, uh, if I do something like, let me show you one of them, right? Show run interface VLAN uh, 1021, right? It's going to be one of your VLAN. So look here, this is the SVI, right? And you should have, um, what else should you have under this? You should have obviously the VRF configuration under that, right? And also you should have the uh, Lisp uh, configuration, right? So each of this, uh, um, uh, uh, the Lisp instance IDs which you saw there, uh, right earlier on the top, they will also have a loopback addresses associated with this. You can see here, these are the loopback, uh, you know, addresses uh, associated with this, right? So 4097, 98, 99, and uh, 100, right? So, uh, I think that's pretty much it again to understand the whole Lisp and uh, the whole um, you know internals of it you would probably want to read uh, probably one of our Cisco press book on it because it's a huge topic if I have some time probably I'll do a video on that uh, maybe pick up a small topology you know these uh, our data center uh, topology and show in how the Lisp works but for now that looks pretty much uh, decent uh, let's also look at uh, the interfaces uh, over here, what has happened to these interfaces? Let me just go down here. Right, so let's look at uh, what has happened on these interfaces, right? 101, 102, what is over there? So for that, we will have to check on the edge as well. Show run um, interface gigabit, I believe, um, 1 slash 0 slash 1. So this is one of my, you know, access interface where the, uh, where we are going to have your, um, um, uh, where we where we'll have our uh, you know endpoints getting connected, right? So that's what you see here. So you can see the dot one edge and map has been anything. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me. What else do we? Okay, so now we will do the next part, which is what I was explaining, right? We will have to configure the BGP on my. Um, we'll have to configure the BGP on my fusion routers, right? So for doing that, what we'll have to do is I probably have a template, but let's do it again so let's see if this is connected maybe not let me reconnect this so that's one of the core and this one as well let me just reconnect this core All right, so so there you go. So we have your core one and core two, right? So these are your camp, uh, fusion routers. So we'll have to, like I said, we'll have to do some BGP configuration on these guys. All right, so what are we gonna do here? Is that uh, probably I have a template? Let me see if I have a template. Okay. Mm, so this is just put in a new file over here and a new file here as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm probably going to get the uh, uh, border configuration off from here, right? So what happened? Watch this. Yeah. So we would we would basically want um, the VLAN SVI configuration. That's it to create that. So let's let's go back here and let's go to the border one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do show run section. Let's do interface. Right, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me just copy this first. All right, so I'm gonna show you the uh, configuration on the fusion for one of the routers and one of the interfaces. Then I'm gonna obviously pause it and do the rest of the config because it's probably gonna take a lot of time if I record all of that, right? So yeah, so what I've done right now is I've pulled in the configuration from my border one over here, right? So what I, what you see over here is basically the configuration from my border one, right? Basically the various VLANs I talked about, right, 3009, 10, 11, the VLANs which got created on the border so that I can kind of extend or share these routes to the outside world that is nothing but my fusion, right. So on my fusion router, what will be the configuration? The first thing is, I'll have to create uh, some kind of sub interfaces, right. So I'll have to create sub interfaces which basically, I have a template here which I had used before, so I'm going to use the same template. Right, so I'll have to create uh, sub interfaces, but what sub interfaces and on which interface? Let's go back to my diagrams. So I'll have to create 
uh, on the gigabit two, right, which is facing the border. And also, I'll have to create because you know for this border, I I can just for redundancy, I can now have BGP neighbor chip here along this interface, and on, from this border, I can have it along this interface, which is gigabit three. Similarly, um, you know, for the other fusion router, I can have it along this interface as well as the gigabit two. So gigabit two and three are the ones which will be used. So let's do the gigabit two first, right? So let me just get this replaced with uh, the 3 with 2 right there you go so now in the gigabit 3 uh, you see I have my VLANs right this is very much I think uh, this is straightforward so the VLAN number uh, is basically put down here so this is just a sub interface right 3009, 3010, 11 and 12 right the numbers are very much in line right I'm not going to use uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 because it looks like it got created. I don't know, maybe DRAC is creating duplicates for some reason. Um, but uh, that that's totally cool because I just want um, uh, you know to create BGP neighborship you know across one of the one of the interfaces sufficient. I'm not sure why it is creating two for the two VLANs for the same uh, you know uh, VRF. Uh, but yeah, this should be fine. So we have 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, we are going to be using only those. So we have uh, also look at the IP addresses, right? So these are all slash 30 addresses. So DNAC used uh, 192.2.100. You know, I think 32.0 subnet for uh, you know for this particular uh, VN, which is campus VN. So this is 33. So I'm going to add one to it and make it 34, right? And I'm going to use this particular IP address for this subnet or on the sub interface on the fusion side. So the same thing follows for the other one um, and this one as well as this one, right? Uh, the format is same. You have 33, um, so this is 34, 37 becomes 38, 41 becomes 42, 45 becomes 42. I'm just using the other, you know, usable letters. So it creates like a point to point, you know, network here, right? And uh, uh, this is, but this is the responsibility of the, of us to, you know, put the configuration on the fusion because DNAC doesn't do anything on the fusion. The other part is having, uh, you know, your uh, BGP configuration. So, right, for, for BGP, we will have to, uh, let me just pull this. Sorry. Let's put it here. Okay. Yeah, so BGP, let me explain what is happening with respect to um, BGP, right? So. Uh, with respect to BGP, again, it's very straightforward. So, uh, like I said, we have right now BGP on the border, and we have to somehow create BGP relationship with the fusion. So that's why you know the number now resonates with you. Sixty-five thousand was the one which we had configured while we were uh, provisioning the border, right? We told the remote AS would be sixty-five thousand. So that's why we are putting sixty-five thousand now. You could put any any other number earlier, and then you know tune this one accordingly. Uh, I'm uh, probably this is not compulsory the router ID uh, and uh, the log neighbor changes and uh, what else you also have uh, the neighbor command so this is interesting so see what I'm doing here the neighbor command is nothing but this is nothing but my uh, IP address of my um, you know SVI on the border side right look here 192.2.100.33 so basically the same thing and the remote AS number is 65002 because this is the AS number on the border and then also I'm putting the update interface. This might again not be compulsory. You might still end up creating neighborhoods even without this. So uh, the rest of the stuff is pretty simple. 33, 37, 41, and 45. That's basically the IP addresses over here. Then you also have the address family here, right? Um, because you have to activate it. So this is your standard BGP configuration. So now I'm gonna obviously pick this up. Right, let's just first pick this up. And let's go to, that is our, Sorry. Yep, so that's basically going on my core one. Right, so let's see if I do a con for C. Yep, that's good. Let's put this one here. Did I do something wrong? Uh, okay, I think I missed the interface. Dig to no shot. Okay, so that's. Uh, that's good. What else? Uh, so we did the first part. Let's also put the uh, BGP stuff. So as soon as I put the BGP stuff, you should start seeing the BGP neighborship coming up on my border. So let's do that. So let's go and put this. That's 
Ja, da der Kamera. Was war die Error? Lauter DGB und um, Okay, I think there was some kind of a space or something. Okay. Let's try to do this again. Okay, oh my bad. Okay, so I think the um, I forgot to change this three to two. Okay, let's do this again. Replace so all. Yeah, so there we go. So let's fix this one and put the configuration again. Yep, that looks good. So the BGP configuration went in. Now on my bottle, you can see here the uh, BGP enable chip is coming up. So it has come up with the uh, the guest VN. It has come up with the default VN. It has come up with the uh, campus VN as well, and I believe this was your, um, you know, uh, global routing table. Even that also, the BGP never chip has come, right? So that's good. So if I probably go and check um, on this guy, show IP. Okay, I lost the connection. Give me a minute. Let me restart this. Okay, that's good. Okay. So show IP BGP uh, summary should give me the all the subnets, right? You can see here uh, we are getting the prefixes as well. So you should start seeing some prefixes over here, and you can see the prefixes for various uh, you know uh, VNs uh, visible over here, right? Uh, which means um, I believe we should have the. So what we have done right now is we have. Um, oh, I think probably I missed telling you guys. So okay, so this is one of the interesting thing, right? Uh, under the address family, look here. I am advertising one specific network. So this is nothing but my DHCP service right now. But in your topology, you might have a lot of other, you know, services. So in which case, you can advertise those, right? So if you see my topology here, I just I'm just advertising 172.16.99.13, obviously. But I would, um, you know, if in your topology maybe you have like 10 other services, now this is the time when you can advertise those services inside. I probably I missed telling that earlier. So that's the whole reason of even doing this, right? Uh, establishing the BGP neighborship and so on, so that you can now bring in all your services and advertise it inside your VM, right? So that's uh, pretty much uh, straightforward. So uh, now you can see that um, all of the all of the VMs will basically have this particular subnet. I mean, I still have a lot of other configuration to be done on obviously to repeat this BGP on. All of the code, but I think still we should see that appearing over here. Uh, let's just double check. Show IP route. Uh, okay, not yet. So probably I'll have to do um, all. Okay, so this was on H2. Let's check on H1 because I did it only on uh, border one, right? So okay, not yet. So I would. I think I'll have to do more on this before. I'll have to probably do the whole BGP stuff before we see this. Uh, maybe at least on this guy, I think we should have it. Yeah, on on border one we already have it. You can see the subnet, which is learned via BGP, and you can see that subnet is entering my, uh, you know, entering my border right now, right? Uh, so that's that's the whole reason of doing this, so that we can like get the whole external subnet whichever that, so that we can give connectivity to our. Oh, okay, actually. I think I made a mistake here. So, show IP route. We are supposed to do VRF uh, um, campus VN. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll try to fix that anyway. So, um, that's mainly uh, what I wanted to show here. Uh, that is basically how you can do the uh, configuration on the campus uh, on the campus core, or basically the fusion routers, right? How you can use the configuration which is there or which is pushed up by DNAC on border, how you can use that to build your BGP configuration on the campus side or, or I mean the fusion side. So let me pause the video now so that I can go and do the rest of the stuff on the rest of the interfaces on the fusion side. Alright, so the last part of this uh, video is the verification part. Now the verification might not work completely because there are some issues with my VM. So um, the vSwitch has an issue. Uh, but I'll show you. Uh, a maximum part of it, it works, right? So, uh, the first thing is, uh, let me show you this. So, after doing the whole configuration on my core routers, right, the fusion routers, I have kind of enabled, uh, uh, I have kind of enabled uh, the whole BGP neighborship between the fusion and the border, right? And I explained on how to do it, right? So, I basically did it on all these interfaces. 
So I did, I showed you guys on Gigabit 2, but I then went and enabled the same thing on Gigabit 3 here, and the same thing on the Campus Core 2 as well. Now, as a result of that, you will basically see um, that uh, the subnet, the DHCP subnet is reachable from outside. So, let me just show you that. Okay, so show IP route, uh, probably VRF. Campus VN, and here you should see the 172.16.99.0, right? The same thing will be uh, available on the border uh, 2 as well. So, whenever any traffic has to go outside the subnet, obviously, you know, this uh, the traffic would basically come down to the border, and from border, you know, it would go outside, right? It'll, the VXLAN tunnel will end at the border, and from border, you know, it will go as a IPv4 packet, uh, reach out to the, you know, DSCP server, and that's how the communication happens. So now to prove that it's actually working, what I've done is, on my topology, I have uh, set up some VMs as my clients. So I have my client 1, client 2, client 3, client 4, right? And uh, currently I'm just using client 2 and client 4. So I think we are entering the final act of our uh, SDS series, which we have been doing for uh, quite some time. I mean, obviously, if, if I get some time, probably I'll do something on wireless as well, but this is the final part of the whole, uh, you know, exercise which we have been doing since the last five six videos right um, and uh, so what is it what is it going to be we have to verify now so we have this client client one two three four and we are going to verify if uh, whatever we have configured is working fine right so what we will do is so let me show you where are my clients so my clients are um, on the same um, the UCS box so uh, these are my clients clients one two three and four right the first two clients are connected to edge one the rest two clients are connected to edge two and uh, what i have done is i have obviously uh, taken the mac address of uh, the first right so let me just show you that right so flash yeah so the mac address of the first client uh, is basically ending with dc 3d i guess so uh, I have added that particular, uh, you know, MAC address over here, right? And I have added that to be my uh, PCI server, right? I have profiled it to be a PCI server. You can see it here. Um, let me see where I did that. CG. Let's click on this edit button, right? See, uh, I have, uh, you know, profiled it to be a, um, I have assigned it to the uh, PCI server, right? Um, Perfect. And similarly, the other one, the other PC, which is uh, the PC connecting to the H2, uh, is this one. And uh, the MAC address on this one is, uh, let's see. The MAC address on this one is, uh, where is it? Wait, give me a second. You can't see it. Yeah. Uh, see, okay. Miss it. Let me just close this and open it again. IP config on. Sorry. Keep on making that mistake. All right. So I can see the MAC address here, seventy six one three. Right. So that one is over here, and I have profiled that to be my guest endpoint right uh, so the pc number one and pc number three i have uh, you know enabled map uh, right uh, mac address based authentication so you can see now because the ports are already on you will see uh, the authentication already succeeding so our sessions look at this so we have uh, uh, you know on the port number 101 which is my pci server you can see the map is coming we can also check uh, show auth sessions interface uh, gig 1 slash 0 slash 1 and you will basically see okay let's do a detailed tab there we go so you will see basically uh, the std value 14 has been assigned right 14 is nothing but my pci server where do we check that you can anytime go down to policy right you can check your uh, scalable groups and check what is 14 right uh, it should be somewhere here maybe let's increase here to 25 
So you have 14, 14, 14. Where is 14? Go to the top. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Where is the PCA server? Look, the proper HTT has been assigned, right? It uh, Because I was able to profile that device as a PCA server, it assigned the HTT, which is 14. Similarly, you know, the uh, uh, on the other edge, the device would have been profiled as just it's profiled as a guest device, right? Uh, because it's part of the guest endpoints, and you can see the corresponding HTT value 6 has been assigned. What is 6? Six? 6 is nothing but guest, which is perfect. Now, the rest of the two devices, what I have done is on um, uh, on this one, I have enabled dot one X. Right, you know how to enable dot one X, right? Basically, go to the adapter and uh, you know go to authentication, enable it, and obviously you have to put in the username password here. So I have put uh, one of the username password which we have configured earlier, right? So I have used, I believe, uh, uh, I believe I've used one of the student password. I think mostly Sam, right? I've used Sam because it belongs to student, right? And that's why you will basically see the um, go back here. So that's why I mean the IP address is 192.2.11.12. Now let's see what what kind of uh, SGT has been assigned to this guy. So if I go for two, you'll see at the below SGT 19 has been assigned. And what is SGT 19? SGT 19 is nothing but uh, let's scroll down. Yeah, here you go. SGT 19 19 is nothing but the SGT student, right? Similarly, on the other side, there is one more PC, right? The PC number four, right? The client which is connected to the other edge, and let's see what is present over there. So that also has been authenticated via dot one X, right? Uh, you can see here, and where is my uh, SGT? The SGT is nothing but, uh, <coughs> yeah, the SGT is nothing but my value eighteen, and eighteen is nothing but SGT faculty, right? So we have four guys right now. We have um, we have PCI servers, right? The first one is the PCI server. We have SGT student here. Then we have uh, guest, and we have SGT faculty, right? Now let's go to our uh, policies and let's test if this is working properly as expected, right? So how do we test? Let's start with say student, right? SGT student. So the SGT student uh, should uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's probably test these two things or maybe one of this is enough, right? Because if it's one, working for the one thing, you know, all the other SGTs would work. So let's test this. So from SGT student, we should have connectivity to SGT faculty, right? Because it's green in color, right? Permitted, right? I might have tinkered this, uh, uh, you know, since my previous video, but doesn't matter. Like you, you can go and change this even now, right? Uh, you can just double click on this and change at any point of time. That's a really good thing about DNAC or, or the whole SPA uh, idea, right? So you can create policies, you can create your intent at a click of a button. So that's pretty cool. Now coming back here, you have student and you have HTT faculty. Let's see if there is connectivity between that. So let's go to this guy. Let's see what is the IP address of my uh, faculty, right? So yeah, the faculty IP address is 192.2.11.13, right? And I have my SGT faculty on this guy, which is 11.12. So if I do 11.13, you can see there is connectivity, right? Which is pretty cool. All right. So we have checked one one use case. Maybe we could check one more. So we checked that from SGT student, we had access to SGT faculty. Now from the SGT faculty, can we check uh, probably to the PCI servers, right? We have here. So from SGT faculty to the PCA servers, we should have we should have just a secure access, right? Which means our thing should not work. So we could go back here um, to our faculty, and uh, the PCA server is basically at uh, 192.2.11.11, right? And you see there is no connectivity, right? Whereas on the other side we have connectivity. From here, you know we can we easily ping from PCA servers to your SGT faculty we are able to ping, right? Because that is allowed, right? From from our you know topology here, right? Uh, from our policy here, we know that you know from PCI server towards the faculty, uh, you know it's default, right? Whenever you see a white box here, it basically means that it is allowed because default is allowed. So from PCI servers to faculty, it is allowed. Whereas from faculty to PCI server, uh, let's see here, it's not allowed because 
this is secure access right so hope that is pretty much clear right so uh, that's pretty cool okay all right so uh, that is all you know which i wanted to cover in this video just to recap on what we did go back here so what we did was uh, we we came to this video let me go back to my mind map i think it's better so we came to this video you know doing all of the earlier step installation the settings the various tools we looked into the design right we looked into the provision right we had looked into only the configuration template and the underlay right previous to this video and we also had set up our policies right using uh, you know integrating ice and uh, we had also had authorization policies set up on ice we put in trust sec and where um, and we also had defined our SGDs, our policies and contracts on the DNA. So all of this was already done. So we came to this video and did mainly this part, right? Mainly the overlay part. So with respect to overlay, we first uh, went and created a, a, a fabric site, right? And inside that fabric, we went and defined uh, you know the roles for each of the devices, right? Which device would be the border and which will be the control, which will be the edge. And then DNAC automatically pushed the VXLAN and list configuration into the fabric. Uh, we verified, yes, there was list configuration. We also checked how the instance IDs are configured, how the VRFs are mapped to the instance IDs. And uh, uh, we also saw uh, if you uh, if you do the layer 3, uh, you know, handoff, you know, it actually creates those uh, uh, SVIs as well, right, on the border so that you can extend uh, your VRF outside your fabric. So we saw that. Uh, so we obviously uh, uh, did not do any kind of inter VM use cases in this video uh, because for that you would basically need to uh, go up to your fusion router and kind of leak the routes right uh, <coughs> uh, between the VRFs and so on so that might be a little complicated use case for this video but probably you guys can surely try um, this use case was kind of implemented because we are anyway going outside the you know fabric to get my dhcp right my because my dhcp is like a shared service sitting outside the fabric so uh, um, our routers are able to or our clients are able to go out of the fabric to the dhcp server to get the dhcp addresses so this kind of you know we kind of implemented right so um and then finally uh, once we had the overlay done once we had the whole overlay configured uh, we went and checked um, you know if everything is working fine using our SGDs, right? We had uh, SGDs configured earlier in the previous video, so we brought up our clients and we saw that uh, they were get, getting authenticated properly. SGDs were getting assigned properly, and then we picked uh, two three use cases from our SGD policies, which we had defined in the previous video, to kind of verify that the functioning is correct. Okay, so uh, I would give uh, if you ask me what what would be the next step, I would suggest you to. Because there are obviously a lot of other things in DNA probably which I myself have not covered like traffic policies and so on, uh, you know, uh, and also probably APIs, right? Um, uh, there are a lot of amazing DNAC APIs which you can check out. So that would be the next step going from here. Uh, also do check out some of the things, some of the advanced use cases like, you know, multi-site, you know, SDA fabric or inter vm communication, how you would do and all of that, right? So uh, that concludes a majority of my video on uh, the whole series on SDA, especially the wired section. I'm not sure if I can do the wireless because I currently don't have the devices, but let's see. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys, and uh, uh, keep tuning in for more updates. Thanks a lot. Stay safe. Bye.